We can think about plate evaluation the same way that you learned in early school about how to evaluate arithmetic or algebra expressions. For example, if we have plus of times 4, 3 minus 8, 7, then you can evaluate the plus 4, 3 first to get 12, and that simplified the expression overall. Then you can simplify the minus 8, 7, and so on to eventually get 13. The difference between plate and arithmetic or algebra, though, is that in plate there is a specific ordering that will be used. Uh, the times 4, 3 will definitely be simplified before the minus 8, 7. But in regular arithmetic or algebra, the order doesn't matter. If you choose to simplify the 4 times 3 first to 12, that's fine. Or you may choose to simplify the 8 minus 7 first to 1. You're going to get to the same answer either way. In fact, in algebra, you're allowed to perform substitution more freely than we can in plate. For example, if you have f of x and y where the y isn't used, and then you have a use of f with 17 and a giant pile of calls to g, then you can perform the substitution directly. Substitute 7 in for x, the giant pile of g for y's, which means the giant pile goes away and you get directly to 17. So in algebra, you do a lot less work to get to this answer than plate would do. But you may wonder, when would a programmer ever write something like this? What does this have to do with programming? And actually, this situation shows up in various contexts. For example, the slides that you're looking at, they're written with Racket using functions something like layout text, which takes a string and a width and height and maybe flows a paragraph to fit inside of that box. So you could imagine calling layout text with Lincoln speech, for score, and so on, to fit it in the box 800 and 600, um, and eventually show that on the screen. But one thing that happens as I'm building the slides is often I create pictures just to see how big they're going to be, and then I never actually draw the picture. So in this case, a lot of extra work has been done to flow the paragraph, to flow this text into a paragraph, even though in the end I only rely on the W and H that were passed in to make this, this picture. We could, of course, arrange to only do this work if we're going to uh, draw the paragraph lines, but it's a little trickier to arrange that work and to only flow it once, even if we draw it multiple times. Here's another example. Imagine reading a file that has to start with hash lang. So the first character has to start with a hash sign. You can imagine a read all cares function that reads all the characters in the file, and then you check whether the first thing is a hash. And uh, if it's not, then you complain. But at that point, you've done a whole lot more work already. You've already read the rest of the file, which it turned out that you didn't need. We could, of course, arrange to only read one character and then read the rest of the file, but we have to think more about organizing the work and the order that the work is going to be done in. If you have a language that would do this work lazily instead, you might even exploit that language to intentionally specify an infinite amount of work when you're only going to use part of the results. So here's a classic example, a numbers from function that creates an infinite list of numbers uh, counting up starting from the number that you give it. And the way this function works is it conses that number onto a recursive call uh, for a larger a number that's one larger. And the point is that there's no conditionals here. It just always directly uh, recurs. So if you try to run this program in plate, uh, it'll just run forever when you call it. It could be useful to have a language that doesn't create the infinite list, but only creates it on demand. So that if you create this infinite list counting from zero, and then only ask for the 10,675th element, that it will give you 10,675 without counting uh, all the way to infinity. This won't work in Plate, or Racket, or Java, or C, because those languages are eager. An expression is evaluated when it's encountered, for some notion of count encountered that's well defined. but. Uh, specifically when you call a function, the arguments to your function call are evaluated right away before you substitute into the function body. There are other languages, uh, such as Haskell or Clean, that avoid unnecessary work. They're called lazy languages, and an expression is evaluated only if its result is actually needed to show you um, the final answer. So if the final answer doesn't depend on typesetting all of the code or reading all of the characters, it just won't do that work. Of course, where we're going here is that we're going to turn our language curly into a lazy language to see how this works.